is the Historic District Commission. The date is August 12, 2021. Um, time is 4.16. And uh, for eager, we're going to take the um, roll. We'll start with Art. Art Gravanis. Yeah, Art Gravanis is here. Thank you. Commissioner. Rosina Negron. Tina Negron, Commissioner. Thank you. And Jim Bohan. Jim Bohan, alternate commissioner. Thank you. And uh, Alyssa Stack. I see her here, but she's not. Taking roll call, Alyssa Stack. Alyssa Stack. Can you hear me, Alyssa? Make sure you're muted. Well, oh, I can't hear I can't hear you. Adam, this is George. I just joined. Okay. George Clark is here as well. Thank you. Um absent. Well, Alyssa Stack is here. She's having trouble communicating at the moment. Um and uh, Darren Raymond Locke is not present at the moment, and Crochet is not present, but expected to show later. Um, I would ask that, that uh, everyone um, please mute their themselves if they're not speaking um, to, to avoid the background noise. I appreciate it. Uh, first item of the agenda is uh, Southport Congregational Church, 524. Pequot Avenue in Southport for property located at 524 Pequot Avenue in Southport to A, expand existing booth zone patio with edging and B, new path lighting. So someone here represent the Congregational Church? There you go. I am Kelly McGovern, garden designer with Outdoor Design and Living. Thank you. And with me is Tim O'Neill, who is the Know your official title, Tim. I think he's muted. You're muted, Tim. I'm sorry. Here we are. I am the uh, buildings and grounds manager at the church. Thank you. So you're going to uh, present to, to the commission. Yep. Does everybody yeah, can, you can share? Can, can you can you share your screen or? I mean, it, um, typically share. I can I can pull up the application if you like. Yes, please. But the way it works is that uh, yeah, the applicant usually uh, presents the application that was submitted to the commission. Um, so anyway, let me. I think if you could pull it up, it'd be faster than yeah, I could. Yeah, sure. Um, I can start talking through it if it, if you'd like. Okay, I just want to point out one thing. There's you, you have some thing, you have some um, one line item on here about plantings. Yep. Um, and we the, the historic district commission doesn't not in your purview. Um, okay. Doesn't regulate plantings, so we we we're not going to hear anything about the plantings. Um, it looks like a great plan though. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. But, but we, we don't regulate that. So just the hardscape is all we're interested in. Okay. okay. <laughs> Excuse me. So existing, we have a um, like an octagon shaped terrace with a little path um, to the various places on the church. Uh, and we, we want to expand it to make it a little bit bigger uh, space using the same material so that we could have gatherings out there after mass or the preschool might use it as a and so uh, the uh, the extension is the um, more of a rectilinear shape and the edging that we were proposing is already existing on the ramp to the office door and we thought about putting it all around just to keep the mulch in place and that edging is a uh, 
a one inch, uh, one and a half inch thick piece of bluestone set on edge this way, soldier course in the ground and with about a two inch reveal. And if I show you like this, this is the, this is the existing edging here. That's what it would look like. And okay, I'm sharing my screen, so. Um... Oh, so they, they didn't see that. Well, you can, yeah. So I mean, that's you might be able to see it's very small. Yeah, that's about it. Um, we, we want to use aged bluestone to match the existing bluestone. Um, we're yeah. making we're making it with adequate pitch to to drain water away and with a 2% slope so it will be compliant uh, for for a walking uh, path. And uh, we're making some of the paths a little wider so it's easier for two people to walk side by side. And then what we would love to do is to put small little lights and you can see them on my drawing with the little black dots. Um, their little eyeball lights, if you will, with a little shroud on one side to just cast light over the sidewalk, not up, but just out. Um, just to to light the way for people to travel there at night. And I don't believe any of that would be seen from the sidewalk down below because we're already about 5 feet higher in grade than the street 5 or 6 feet. And they would be on a, I was presume they would be on a timer and they would maybe go on at dusk and off at 10 o'clock at night. Okay. Something like that. Okay. Uh, the path, yeah. the path from the stairs on the left going towards the sanctuary. Uh, that's very little change. We might just straighten it out. It's not quite straight. And then we have this columbarium here on the left, which will stay the same. We just want to put in these little two by two bluestone pieces so people can walk there to suggest to go onto it. Right now, there's no path onto it. There's a little bench built into the wall. And I kind of feel like people are afraid to walk there and go sit there. So this would be a suggestion that they are allowed to walk on it. Very discreet. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, no. Oh, I should say that the um, the existing patio is set in stone dust. It is not set in cement. So we would do the same thing again. We would not lay a four inch thick slab of cement. It would be free draining stone dust. Um, in case uh, we ever need to expand the columbarium or change it in any way, it'd be easy to easy to do. I think okay. that's about it. Yeah. Hey Kelly, I, I would just add that uh, the lighting that we're proposing is uh, uh, um, is replacing some existing lighting that's already there, um, and it's actually lower to the your lighting that we're the lighting that we're proposing is lower to the ground than uh, what's already existing out there now. And they're low voltage LED lights. Um, they're not big line voltage bright lights. They're very low. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Anything else to add? Don't believe so. Okay. Rosina, do you have any questions? Rosina? I don't have any questions. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Adam, did you say Art? Art doesn't have any. I'm sorry. Yes, okay. Thank you. George, do you have any questions? Don't have any questions. Thank you. Jim, questions? Jim, you're, you're muted. All right. The the geometry of the terrace is unchanged. You're not moving any building walls or anything. Just changing the the amount that's paved. 
Correct. We're not, okay, changing, you. we're not changing the church buildings. Is that what you mean? Right, 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 yeah, right. correct. Thank you. Uh, thank you. No other questions. Thank you. Okay. Alyssa, do you have any questions? Yeah, Alyssa, your, your audio is not working yet. Maybe you should try uh, dialing back in. Yeah, try calling back in. No questions? No, okay. Just have one question, and I guess that's how many, um, you said there is some existing uh, light fixtures, Tim? Yes. How many how many fixtures are there existing today? Um, there are, uh, along the walkways, there are, um, I believe, about five of them. About five lights. And then there are some okay, you're, there there are some up lighting in the garden on some of the plant material. Is that remaining? It was my am I muted? No. Is it is the up lighting remaining? Uh it was my thought that that it would not remain. I did not believe that the commission would really want that. Well, that's true. The commission would, is, I mean, if you tried to, if you can um, for approval for an uplighting, we, we would probably deny it. That's what I um, thought. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted it's just to a tricky situation. Now that you have uplighting, if now that it's existing and you want to take it away, yes, technically we should approve it, but um, I guess it's just good to know what, what's what you're, I just want to know what you're proposing, you know, what, what's there versus what's being uh, proposed. So, Tim, you're saying there's, there's five, um, five path lights at the moment. I, I, I don't know for sure. Um, Adam, but I would say there are, there's, there's at least. 3 that I know of along the, uh, uh, that walkway that parallels Pequot Avenue. Below the column. Okay. And there's none in the, in the, in the patio area. I don't, uh, I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think these light pictures are pretty small and, um, it is an elevated surface, like you mentioned. Right. But, um, so, and then I guess I don't see an issue with it. They literally are going to be like, you know, 2 or 3 inches out of the ground. They're really very discreet. Yeah. And they have a nice little shroud on the top. So it only sends the light out horizontal, you know, washes the sidewalk so people can see where they're walking. It doesn't shine up at all. Okay. All right. I don't have any other questions. Um, and I did not uh, receive any um, letters in favor of this application. I did not receive any letters opposing this application. So the hearing is closed. Thank you. Um, can I ask a general question, Adam? Sure. Um, we are approved. How will we? How will you let us know? And how long is that approval good for? Is it? Is it uh, one year? You'll that... you'll find it tonight if it's approved, and the certificate, certificate of appropriateness will be issued. It'll be mailed to you. Okay. Um, and it's for one year, which can be renewed for up to six months, but the initial okay. approval is good for one year. Okay, very good. And, and you just have to start, you can start to work within that one year. So at the very end of the year, if you could get in the work, then right. fine. It's, it doesn't have to be finished within that year. It just right. has to be started. Started. Okay. And to read, I don't think we'll have to renew it, but that's. Um, Coming before the commission again, or is it a. No, no, that's just you can just come to me. Okay. All right. And I, can, I can extend I can extend it. Okay. 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 Very good. Thank, Thank you very you. much everyone. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is old South road LLC 171 old South road in Southport for property located at 171 old South road in Southport. For a change to previously approved lighting and new additional lighting. Good afternoon, Adam. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, this is Jack France, and I'm representing Fred Ryan on this application. And as a result of some conversations that we had with 
Fred's designer and our lighting designer and Fred's contractor were proposing some changes to what was previously approved as well as some additional lights. And now I'm going to share my screen if I could. Can you see that? Yep. Okay, so uh, first of all, we're requesting uh, the addition of six pathway lights at the front entry. There's a uh, single lane driveway that goes to the garage and back on the sidewalk. Doesn't come from the street. It comes from the from the um, driveway. And we're proposing two lights at the beginning of the sidewalk. And then four lights where the intersection takes place between the sidewalk and the front door. In the rear, we're proposing the same fixture, which I'll show you later. Uh, there's seven of them in the back. Uh, two off of the rear stoop, one around the corner on the other little sidewalk, two at the beginning of the sidewalk to the garage pergola, and two more when you get to the pergola. Uh, we are also proposing to change uh, previously approved lights at the barbecue. Those are right here on this little pedestal. and. Um, we're proposing a relocation of a hanging light that's currently on the side porch, proposing to take that hanging light and place it on the front porch under the new portico. And to replace the light on the side porch with a surface mounted light, which will sit on the ceiling. Uh, we're also proposing four wall mounted lights on the exterior doors on the rear elevation. So now I'm going to go to the elevations. Here are the lights on the barbecue. These are the lights that I just mentioned here. Two of them on the upper balcony and two of them at the rear stoop on the rear elevation. Also, we're proposing two lights on the, um, on the garage. I think these were previously approved of a different type. Here's the side porch where we're taking the current hanging light and and bring it around the corner to the front entry and replacing it with a little uh, surface light. The path light is uh, Aurora light. It's um, they come 17 inches. We're going to cut it down to 15. Um, they're bronze finish. They will get like almost black after, you know, weathering in the air here in Southport. The uh, lights on the barbecue are also dark bronze. They're 17 inches high and eight and a half or eight and a quarter inches in diameter. The sconces uh, are the uh, 19 inch high sconces, cylindrical, and they're 10 inches across. And the The other sconces, these are the ones on the um, balcony. They're 10 inches high and uh, 11 inches wide. And these are the ones on the garage. They are 13 inches high and 13 inches wide. Here's a picture of the existing light here that's going to be transferred to the front porch. And this shows you sort of the whole, the whole assortment. Um, at this point, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. <clears throat> Thank you. Alyssa, can you start? Uh, no, no audio. Okay, Alyssa doesn't have audio. Jim, questions? Um, no questions. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Okay. George, questions? Uh, Jack, the two lights by the front step and the light in the ceiling, um, just from my opinion, I think is, is more than required. Uh, that side light is very bright. It was very bright when it was on the side side of the house. 
And if you're going to move it around with the same intensity, it's going to be it's it's a it's a bright light, uh, unless there's some plan to put a different bulb in it or to to reset it. Then uh, that light that light would be on a dimmer. It's it's very bright today, um, and uh, but the two lights that are right almost right below it, right next to the right next to the building, look a little bit redundant. It, since you've got the light in the ceiling, uh, uh, you know, almost right, almost right above it. So, are you proposing that I eliminate the two that are closest to the porch? Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, I, I think that would be an acceptable stipulation. There were a lot of chefs on this, so you know, we. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. That's that's fine. And the light that you're going to put on the ceiling of the side porch it's the one that you showed in the drawing there the one that's in the top of the round yeah it actually is i think it's going to improve things from your point of view because it tucks up i don't think you'll see it it's going to tuck up above the freeze board on the porch yeah just go to the picture of the fixtures yeah and i believe it's about nine inches high it's this one right here Better, yeah okay so i think that'll be a great improvement thank you yeah, and I'll make sure they put uh, low wattage bulbs in the uh, in the in the one on the front porch. And the yeah. intention here is to either use if we do use LED bulbs, which I think more and more people are doing, For they'll sure. be twenty seven hundred K versus yeah. you know otherwise they'd be incandescent. And the path lights um, that I'm proposing, they are LED and they will be the twenty seven hundred K. Which is the simulated incandescent color temperature? The lights that you're putting on the back, the two uppers and two lowers. To be honest with you, I mean, I, I don't think those are visible from the street. Uh, so I think a lot. Of, I think a lot of the lights in the rear may not be visible, but it's hard to tell yeah. what you can see from um, Willow Street if you looked at an angle. If you were down beyond Harriet Wiswell's house, you Where might you? possibly see them. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see those. I, I, I would suggest if that was the front of the house, I'd probably have more concern. In the back of the house, I, I think they'll look fine. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jack. Okay. Mark, do you have any questions? Um, no, thank you. Uh, Rosina, do you have any questions? My only question was the height of the fixture, and Jack clarified that. So, thank you. Okay. And Alyssa, it looks like you might have audio, maybe not. Um, so, yeah, I just had a similar question to or comment that George had about the, the uh, path lights at the front door. You know, there's six of them and four of them at the, you know, at the, um, the large area, or the square, you know, square landing area seems like a lot yeah so to be clear i'm okay if you want to stipulate that we remove the two that are closest to the stoop because i think george's point is well taken the ceiling light will yeah. cover that area pretty well okay i'm concerned i guess uh, yeah that's a start i guess i'm concerned that just having those um the, the two other ones might seem random i don't know how you feel about that if you just you know what i mean Yeah, I guess from as you look at it from the road, they'll be symmetrical. Um, so yeah, my doorway. My, yeah. Um, so maybe it won't be too bad. Yeah, I th and there's got to remember there's a fence on this property, so it's not like some of the okay. some of the homes that you have lawn going right up to the street where the light gets cast out farther. Um, I think having those two shouldn't be too bad. Okay. Okay, I don't think I have any other questions. Thank you. Um, let's see if I can get give Alyssa one more chance. Alyssa? She's still having audio troubles. Okay. Um, okay, so I, I did not receive any letters in favor of this application, and I did not receive any letters opposed this, to this application, so the hearing is closed. Thank you, Jack. Thank you.
Next application is Kaplan and John Gospel, 249 Beach Road in Fairfield for property located at 240 Beach Road in Fairfield. Um, for A, change doors and windows. B, new balcony. C, convert screen porch to shed. D, new lanterns. E, masonry terrace. And also the cottage um, part as well. I don't think I have that. Yeah, it should be on the application. It's on the application form. It says under main house, and then it says under cottage. Yes, it does. Okay, and cottage, change garage doors, windows, new lanterns, relocate gas meter, and new copper gutters. Got it. Uh, good afternoon. It's Jack France, and I'm uh, representing. Actually, I'm re representing the incipient owners, John and Jackie McFadden. McFadden by proxy of um, Kathleen and John Gauspole. And I'm not sure whether the McFaddens might actually already own this house because I think the closing was sometime today. Um, we are requesting approval for renovations at 249 Beach Road in the Old Post Road Historic District. This property is a super important house. It's known as the Isaac Tucker House. And um, it's um, also got an accessory dwelling, which is known as the old Academy tea room. Uh, it's no longer open for business, but it was in operation from, I believe, 1915 to 1925 as a tea house. And while the house is a, a typical example of late 18th century Connecticut uh, house construction, I think it's safe to say that the primary historic value here is the um, the amazing part that it played in the Revolutionary War, and also the fact that it represents one of the few remaining homes in town to predate the conflict. The Isaac Tucker House uh, was built in 1766. It was um, was torched by the British in the in the invasion, July 7, 1779. And tradition holds that a servant was hiding upstairs, came down, and put out the fire and save the house. And you, you can see in the front parlor, there are burn marks on the floor. And it's all part of the narrative that the historical society has, you know, if you take their walking tour. The house was later owned by Edmund Hobart. Um, and, and he actually served as the postmaster of Fairfield in the mid 19th century. We're proposing changes to both the main house and the accessory dwelling or the cottage on the main house we're proposing to we're proposing to convert the existing screen porch into a shed like structure that will function as a mudroom it will have the same exact footprint and the roof line as the uh, existing porch but it will have vertical v joint siding and some double hung windows um, and, and it will the purpose of the siding being that it is to differentiate from the uh, siding on the house. We also want to change the arrangement of the French doors on the back of the house. And I'm not sure that you can see this from a public way, but again, you might be able to see it from the old post road. Currently, there's a set of doors and side lights and we're proposing three pairs of French doors instead of the arrangement that's there. Uh, we also want to add, um, we want to replace a window on the second uh, floor of the rear with a French door. This is the existing window we want. And there's actually a little flat roof here. It's hard to see, but uh, we want to have a little Juliet balcony overlooking that roof line uh, and the French door behind it. Um, we also want to convert two small double hung windows, which are these here. I'm sorry, these, these here, we want to convert them to casement windows with a heavy check rail to simulate double hung windows because that will be deemed as a bedroom by the building department. And currently there are no egress windows up there. We also 
are asking to remove this chimney, which is not original to the house. If you look at it, the brick is different in the, um, if you look at the floor plan, you can see that the old kitchen fireplace was here and the chimney we want to remove is here. It was probably used either for mechanical equipment or, or an old stove, but it, it's not being used now and it kind of messes up the, the kitchen space. And um, finally, we'd like to propose new light fixtures, which will um, be on the rear elevation on either side of the uh, grouping of French doors and on the, um, on the shed. And we're proposing also to replace, and I'm not sure you can see this either, but there is a patio on the rear of the house, which try to blow this up. There's an existing paver block patio on the back of the house. We want to replace it with random rectangular bluestone. And uh, I mentioned the copper lanterns, which I will show you later. The um, looking back at the evolution of the house, um, I think it's kind of important. 1922 Sandburn fire insurance map. You can see the original house, the wing off the back. There's some kind of little tiny shed here. And you can see the um, the tea room. Nineteen forty nine. There's been an addition put onto the tea room, and a shed added between the small shed and the main house. And then, really interestingly, um, if you go to the Aeneas Smith map, which is the oldest map that I've found of Fairfield that's reliable as uh, 1858, you can see um, the Hobart house, which is no longer the Tucker house, it was the postmaster, and the actual post office on the corner. And it makes me wonder if that post office building was repurposed as the tea house because uh, it's approximately the same proportion and, and size as the tea house, but I, I can't prove it one way or the other. Maybe somebody knows the answer to that, but I think it's interesting. And then, with respect to the tea house or the tea room, We are proposing uh, to relocate the secondary entrance, which is currently right here, and to move it around the corner and place it here. Um, we also are moving the gas meter, which currently is here, and we're proposing to move it over here. Um, we're also proposing to change the garage doors because at some point these very suburban looking garage doors were put in the garage and we're, we're proposing to put in these doors, which we think are much more like what was originally there. If you go to the historic homes in Connecticut website, there's actually a photograph, which I think I have somewhere. Yeah, right here. You can see the old garage doors, at least ones from uh, you know, maybe not the distant past, but these elliptical garage doors, which are just simple wooden garage doors. So we're proposing to um, replace those garage doors with, with these. Um, we're also proposing to change the gutters on the garage to copper uh, half-round gutters. Currently, they're OG gutters. 
there are OG gutters elsewhere on the on the buildings, and the plan would be to gradually retire those as things need to be re-roofed and replace them with nicer copper gutters. We also are proposing new lanterns, which would be the same type that we have proposed on the rear of the house uh, on either side of the garage doors. And I will show you. Oh, and one interesting thing is the door that's on this cottage, I think is the original door because I found a picture of the old tea room and you can see, well, maybe not, but a very similar door that existed sometime between 1915 and 1925, showing these sort of vertically proportioned panes. And the inside of the tea room is quite similar to what you see here. It's got a exposed beam interior. All the windows and the doors and the um, garage doors will be all wood. The windows and doors will be um, SDL wood construction. And the um, gutters will be red copper. The lanterns are these Carolina lantern. Uh, they're beautiful lanterns made out of copper. They'll, they'll turn dark, as will the gutters. They're 26 inches, but that includes the scroll, so the actual lantern's only about 18 inches. And um, I think that's it. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Art? Uh, none for me, Adam. Thank you. Thanks, Art. Rosina? The material of the balcony in the back of the house, the Juliet balcony, I'm assuming that's wood, correct? The the railing is proposed to be wrought iron. I, I forgot okay. to mention that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Jim? No questions. Melissa? We have happy yet? Still no list. Okay. George? Uh, questions? No questions, Adam. Thank you, Jack. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I noticed that Chris Shea has joined the meeting. Chris, I'm not sure when you arrived or if you heard the presentation. I arrived in the middle of the presentation, so. Um... Okay. Um, and I don't think I have any questions. Uh, Jack, it's a very thorough application. I do have a letter of support, which I'll read. Um, dear historic district members, my wife Liv and I live at 205 Beach Road in Fairfield at the corner of Beach Road and Old Post Road. We're happy to have met our new neighbors, John and Jackie McFadden, who have recently purchased 249 Beach Road. Their new house is just two doors away from us. John and Jackie have shared their plans for their renovation with us, and we believe the new design by Jack Franzen is in keeping with our historic neighborhood. We feel the old screen porch they're removing detracted from the otherwise beautiful home. Jack's design for the additional or the addition is an improvement to the neighborhood, in our opinion, and we support the McFadden new plans for their home. Sincerely, Andy Montali. 205 Beach Road. They did not receive any letters of, and opposing this application. Um, okay. And um, so, um, if there are any other questions? The hearing is closed. Thank you, Jack. Thank you very much. Uh, next item on the application is Rosita. Hang on, do we have enough? Yes, we do. Rosita Negron, 952 Old Post Road in Fairfield. Property located at 952 Old Post Road in Fairfield for a wood little free library mounted on wood pole. And Rosita Negron will be recusing herself for this application and uh, presenting it, <laughs> I suppose. Thank you. 
to share, Rosina? Yes, I'm trying to share. There. Okay. So my name is Rosina Negron. I live in 952 Old Post Road, and the proposal that I'm uh, presenting is for a little library, as you saw in the past that the Pequot Library proposed, and they are in many areas of town. Um, I'm showing at the moment the um, property, and in the red dot, um, it is where we are thinking of putting the um, little free library. Um, it is on a, our property. There is, since we moved here, there has been a gap between some shrubs, some tall shrubs and some short shrubs. And I figured that is a good place to um, put this. Um, the design of the little library is basically um, kind of questionable at the moment. It was intended to be a present from my kids to me, and everyone began complaining that it was too complicated. So I am showing if I get my way, what will the little library look like, um, which I even created a mock-up of, um, which is a replica um, of our front entrance. There are other options um, in terms of what could be, because they sell a little library. Um, so I'm showing right now if um, we end up buying one, which is my least, um, least favorable idea, it will look like this. Or if we go with a more simple design, which is similar to the one that was installed at the Pickwood um, Library lot across the street. Um, in terms of the location, this was the mock-up that we did, and that is the size if we go with the replica of the front entrance. And from kind of the main library looking down, this will be the location that you will see it. Just for reference, this is the one that is at the um, space across the street from the Pequot Library. And what else? I have one more. So this is basically that same one um, from the Pequot Library was showing just general the construction type, which it will be the same that we follow if we go with the replica of our uh, front entrance. And the post will be just a four by four post. So that is the extent of the application. Okay, thanks, Rosina. Yep. Chris, do you have any questions? For your application, Rosina, um, so it looks like you've got two or three different options supposed to approve. Mock up with those are your kids in the to it seems to be a lot big so just maybe need some clarification on I can barely hear you Chris sorry, sorry. Uh, so just uh, to restate what I my quick question is I'm not sure which Little library we're approving because I think you've presented two or three different ones. So I, I did this application before kind of my birthday and the intent was that I was going to get it for my birthday, which didn't happen. Um, ideally, the one that, um, 
the one that I will um, get, is, since now it's up to me, basically, it will be this one on the screen, which is the replica of um, the house, which is the one that shows on the mock-up that I did with the kids. Okay, that, that makes sense to me. So this is the one that you're asking for us to approve. And it just for, yeah. um, so the dimensions, it's about two feet tall, 26 inches, I think. Basically, yes. Yeah. 26 inches 26 in height, the door itself, the yeah, operable like door will be 19 inches. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Chris. Hart? No questions. George? Please. Ken? No questions, Regina. Thank you. And Alyssa, I guess, is going to type her questions. And her question has been answered. She's thinking the same thing as Chris. And Regina, I don't have any questions. Um, and I did not receive any letters in favor of this application, and I did not receive any letters opposing the application. So the hearing is closed. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is Hardy and Jennifer Royal, 720 Old Post Road in Fairfield for property located at 720 Old Post Road in Fairfield to remove existing arbor from front walkway. Hi, everybody. Um, my husband is sitting right next to me. Sorry, we'll help poke hope right in. Hopefully this is gonna be a fairly straightforward request. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share um, my screen, which includes, um, uh, well, I guess I don't have the application up. Hang on one moment. Um, okay. Could you just identify yourself for the record, please? Oh, I'm sorry. This is Jennifer Royal. My husband is Hardy Royal, who's sitting right next to me. Thank you. Um, what, I, what I'm hoping to do is just share with you, uh, well, let's go ahead and look at our plot plan um, so you can see. What we're looking to do is get rid of the or remove the existing arbor structure, which is on our walkway on our front yard. So since we moved here about a year ago, we've been trying to do a lot of clearing out of the front yard. It was um, it was quite a lot of uh, greenery that we've cleared out over time, and the arbor is sort of the last thing that we would like to um, take out. Uh, the arbor is not original to the house. Um, it was actually, we believe, we, it was put up, you can see it here, it has a huge big vine on it that is um, proven to be quite difficult to take care of, and as you can see, the arbor is probably going to fall over in the next windstorm that we have. It is not original to the house. We believe it was put in in the 19, early 1990s. Um, and we have a document, um, if you could bear with me for one second, I just want to find, um, I want to share, stop, stop sharing for one second and pull up another document that we received from the historical society, which does show um, the house without the arbor. So Fairfield Museum. Fairfield Museum, excuse me. Um, I had it up here before, but let me just see this. Hang on. Uh, and I'll share one second. How do I share that one? Um, bear with me. Okay. Sorry, I had it all on my screen and then I lost it all. Um, on the Fairfield, uh, history.org website, they have a section that tracks to Google Maps. And one of the pictures they have up, uh, Karen Burke, I guess the library director, identified as June of 1977 that did not have the arbor in the picture. So I think we wanted to return it to that uh, maybe original state. And that that is our request, to, re 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 to remove with not replace. Okay, is that it? That is it. Okay, thank you. Um, Rosina, any questions? No questions, thank you. Carl, do you have any questions? None for me, Adam. Chris, questions? Just didn't get that audio. Chris, questions? No questions. Say it's no. Thank you. Uh, Alyssa, do you have any questions? No questions from Alyssa. Uh, Jim, questions? No questions. Thank you very much for a very 
for your presentation. And, and George, questions? Seem to have lost George. Okay, George is no longer at the meeting. Um, I did not have any questions. I did not receive any letters in favor of this application. I did not receive any letters opposing the application. So the hearing is closed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Adam. Bye -bye. Thanks, Commission. Okay. Thank you. Next on the agenda is Blake and Page Souza, 121 Old Post Road in Fairfield, located at 121 Old Post Road in Fairfield, for A, Belgian block edging on driveway, and B, extension of driveway. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes. Um, I am Paige Souza. Husband Blake Souza is over here in our other chair. I'm going to share my screen with you. Um, okay. Are you guys able to see that? Yep. Okay. So we are representing 121 Old Post Road. Um, just a little background. Um, in the spring of 2019, this project is already done. And so we're going to rewind a little bit. Um, without approval, it was completed. We were newlyweds moving to Fairfield and just completely 27, 28 year olds excited to like just plant our roots here. Um, and we just fell in love with being on this beautiful historic street. So the yard and exterior of the house needed some repair and updating just due to the construction that was done the previous spring when the house was being renovated by the builder. So we made some large investments to landscape, remove some trees and extend the driveway. Um, we extended the driveway because we knew our family was going to expand. Um, and we had seen Belgian blocks elsewhere on Old Post Road, a few houses up from us actually, and in other close neighborhoods, and we admired that look, so we were inspired to keep the general style as we enhanced the exterior of our home. Um, and we knew we were part of the historic district, but had absolutely no clue that we needed to ask for approval. Um, and so when we got the letter from the committee this May, um, more than two years after the projects were originally completed, we were really shocked in that time frame. The last few years, we've gotten a puppy, we a pandemic hit us, we had our daughter, like all these things have happened, and we didn't know about the large step of the process of the app application for a certificate of appropriateness, and really want to work with you guys to make it right. So, we've done all that we. We could in the last, since we got the letter to submit the appropriate paperwork since receiving um, the letter from you guys, and I'm going to share some pictures with you. So these are the 2 things that we are applying for the expansion of the driveway and then Belgian blocks for edging the driveway. And we'll start with the driveway extension 1st, so this is what the driveway looked like prior to expanding. And this is what it looks like now on the right side. So um, the expansion measures less than 200 square feet altogether, and there's enough space for one car to park in the widest spot. And then for the Belgian blocks, for the Belgian blocks, you'll see on the left there is this is the view from Old Post Road. And then on the right, it's the view from our front steps. And this is what the house looks like before renovations um, and or doing any kind of landscaping that we did. Another picture of the before. And this is what the house looked like on the left when we moved in compared to the current curb appeal, which is on the right. Um, we really found that our overall intent was really to restore and refresh the rundown yard and the exterior, expanding the driveway in such a way that it mimics other styles that we've seen um, within other driveways here on Old Post Road. And we've installed sod in the front and backyard. We removed large dead a large dead tree that was in the front yard. You can see the shadow from on the left picture, and then also removed a large tree on the right side of the house. Um, that was dangerous and invested in landscaping. So, um, 
we have other slides too, but we'll just stop for questions right now. Okay, thank you. Art, would you like to start? Uh, I'm not sure I have any questions other than uh, I think uh, our, uh, our our longstanding position on Belgian blocks is uh, pretty clear. Thank you. Rosina? Um, my main comment is that I believe back in December 2019, uh, the then um chairman might had stopped to talk with you guys because we had a lot of conversations back and forth um we have a lot of people in the old post road historic neighborhood that actually watch over every single project that people are doing in their houses and um i believe back either in november or december um even maybe before that, I, I think it must have been December, um, we received a complaint about the Belgian blocks um, on your property. And we've known about it since then. And I believe you guys, um, we tried as a commission to try to address this by, back there. So um, that is kind of my main concern that it's been several years that the neighborhood has known about the non-compliance of the Belgian blocks. Um, so kind of that's my main comment. So thank you. Can I respond to both of those? So j just a quick sure, question. So um, one you. of the, sorry, one of the main houses that we drew inspiration from is just up the road from us on 197 old post and as you guys can see in the pictures it's it's very clearly belgian block was there like a grandfather an exception process that one house you know was able to get that doesn't apply to others moving forward or for the house on the right is something like that more acceptable if we're being asked to replace the belgian block it doesn't look like belgian block it looks like a, yeah. like cobble a left yeah. Is what yeah. he's referring to for the those are Belgian blocks. Yeah, those I mean all up the driveway. Those look like cobble. They're, yeah, they're more um irregular in shape and, and color. And then uh the, so should we have gone with here. a cobblestone then instead of a Belgian block? Is that something that's acceptable for the historic society doing a cobble instead of a uniform? Uh, Belgian yes. block. Okay. Yep. Do you have anything else to say? No, I'm just, if that's, you know, if that's the stance we're we're happy to replace it with, you know, the, the non uniform cobblestone. We just, again, we, when we were going through this, that was a particular house that we looked at and said, that's gorgeous. You know, we, we'd like to replicate it as close as possible. And, you know, we didn't even know that there was really a difference between cobblestone and, you know, Belgian block. So I, I appreciate the clarification. Um, um, oh, go ahead. Is he still talking? I was just going to say in response to someone coming to our house, it was from my memory, probably the end of May or June of 2019, someone showed up on our doorstep saying that we, what we did was not, we weren't supposed to do it, which that's great, but like, where's your welcoming committee? <laughs> like if someone can is, is gonna come to my doorstep and tell me we did something wrong, I feel like there should be someone who comes and says, welcome to the community, here's the handbook, because we had no idea whether our real estate agent told us we lived on the street, we didn't know what that meant with it. So I'm, I'm, it's unfortunate that that discussion was had and that it was brought to your attention, but we didn't we really didn't know so in that moment when someone came to my doorstep and said you shouldn't have done this like what do you want me to do we just spent thousands of dollars trying to just like improve our curb appeal and and stay you know match up with our our neighbors here 
it is an issue. Um, primarily, it's it's the realtors who should be um, informing you of the you know what what's what's entailed living in a historic district and um, offering you a handbook um, that, that you know, we have a handbook that's online that's easily that's uh, readily available to review and it and it outlines. Pretty clearly, what it's going to entail with living in a district and what you can and can't do. Um, and I know a lot of the realtors don't; they're, they're not 100% forthcoming with what, what's entailed with living in. You know, and that's unfortunate. Um, you know, we're just to, we're all um, volunteers, so it's not like we're you know we work for the town of Fairfield, and and it's hard enough to to keep this whole thing going and. And we, we'd like to, you know, welcome every new resident to the town, but it's really difficult to keep track of that, you know. Um, and the same goes for for leasing the commissions, and and you know, you're you're getting this this uh, violation years after it's been done, um, because it hasn't it hasn't come to my attention until just recently, and it's not something I necessarily want to enforce, but um, you know, kind of have to. So. Okay, thank you. So, where do we go from here? Well, we're still going around the table and asking questions and making comments. So, um, uh, the next is Chris. Chris Shea, do you have any questions or comments? Not sure if you can hear me. I, yeah, you have I to speak have up no, a little bit. I have, I have no further questions or no comments on this application. Thank you. Okay. Uh, George, George is back. I lost power for a second. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't have any questions. I think you've addressed them. Okay, thank you. Um, Melissa said she does not have any questions. And Jim, do you have any questions? No questions, thank you very much. Okay, and I don't have any questions either. I, I think, um, I, you know, I think the commission has and we just discussed sort of um, the position of the commission when it comes to, to Belgian block. It's um, there's a subtle difference between Belgian block and and these these cobblestones that you that you liked. They do look very similar, but they're they are different. Um, and it's unfortunate that you went through the process of installing it all without coming to us for approval first. Um, it's unfortunate that you didn't realize he had to come to us for a poll. Um, but um, anyway, that's all I have to say about that. And uh, I did not receive any um, letters uh, um, opposed this application and not receive any letters to support this application. Um, so unless you have anything to add, the hearing is closed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move into the executive session and consideration of public hearings. Um, first item on the agenda, let me see the alternate sequence tonight is Stack, Bohan, and Clark. So let me see if some few. So on the first application, it will be uh, Stack and Bohan. And then second one, Bohan Clark. Third one, Stack Bohan. Fourth application will be Clark. And then Fifth application will be Stack, and last application will be Bohan. Hopefully, I get that. Yeah. Last application is which? So just the last application is which? Bohan. This is Chris, and I'll just vote on applications four, five, and six, right? And then is yeah, Rosina? Correct. Is Rosina recusing herself on four? She would be so. Yeah, we have to add. So you'll need another uh, alternate on four. So four will be 
Park and Stack. Um, five will be Bohan, and six will be Park. I think that's it. Okay. Um, Do we so have first, Clark at this moment in the meeting, though? Yeah, he's back. He just he was briefly out of the news power again. Shoot. Yeah, we don't have him. So. Okay. Um, well, he is not on. He's not voting on the first application. So hopefully he'll be back for the second one. Um, okay. So we'll move forward and adjust it accordingly. So the first application is for Southport Congregational Church, 524 Pequot Avenue in Southport, for property located at uh, 524 Pequot Avenue in Southport to A, expand existing booths on patio with edging and B, new path lights. Can I get a motion? I'll make the motion to approve A and B as presented. And I'll second that. In two seconds. Discussion? No discussion. And we'll take a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Opposed? No abstentions. The motion passes unanimously. And next item on the agenda. Okay, George is not here. So. Bohan stack. Again, the same the same alternates will be on this uh, this uh, application stack and Bohan. So old South Road LC one seventy one old South Road in Southport, or property located at one seventy one old South Road in Southport, for changes to previously approved lighting and new additional lighting. And can I get a motion? I'll make the motion um, to approve A with the stipulation to only have four fixtures in the front path, not sit as presented. I'll second that. Were there, any, were there any other conditions that Jack agreed to on 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 this? No, I think it was just that that one just removal okay. of those two okay. lights close to the to the front porch. Okay, thank it was you. also the, um, the wattage on the fixture. He mentioned that it was on a yes. dimmer, but he said that the light bulb, um, they will do um, one that was not as bright. But that was the only the other thing. Can, it's not much we can do on like the light bulb. Exactly. Wattage, yeah. that's, that's kind of a tricky. Oh. Um, okay. Okay. Any other discussion? All right, all in favor? All opposed? None opposed? Um, no abstention, the motion passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda, again, uh, Stat Bohan will give you the alternates. Kathleen and Don Gospel, 249 Beach Road in Fairfield for property located at 249 Beach Road in Fairfield. For A, change doors, windows. B, new balcony. C, convert screen porch to shed. A, new lanterns. E, masonry terrace um, on the cottage. F, change garage doors, doors and windows. Uh, G, new lanterns. H, to locate gas meter. And I, new copper gutters. Can I get a motion? Yeah, Art uh, will make a motion to approve uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I as presented. I'll second that. But Jim second? I'll second that, Adam. Thank you. Discussion? No discussion? Okay, take a vote all in favor. Um, any opposed? None opposed? No abstentions? The motion passes unanimously. Next 
extent of the agenda is Rosina Negron, 952 Old Post Road in Fairfield for property located 952 Old Post Road in Fairfield for a wood little free library mounted on wood pole. Again, uh, Stack Bohan will be the alternates and Rosina is recusing herself. And we have Chris Shea voting on this. So he arrived. So do we have a motion? Again, our uh, motion to approve item A is presented. And I'll second that. Second. Jim seconds discussion. The, the only comment I had was um, just so we know what we've approved, the applicant clarified that she's requesting the juror. 26 inch, I think, uh, all option. That is yeah, correct, should, my understanding. We, yeah. We should, do we need to put that in the motion as to, as to verify what was approved? What was I, can, the... I suppose I could amend the motion uh, uh, item uh, A to be approved as presented with the uh, stipulation that. Um, the the 26 inch uh, little library uh, as yeah, as part of the application uh, be uh, be included in the certificate of appropriateness. Great, Jim. Do you second? You second that, Jim? And I'll second that. Okay. Um, all in favor? All opposed? Unopposed? Abstentions? No abstentions? The motion passes unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, Hardy and Jennifer Royal, 720 Old Post Road in Fairfield, property located at 720 Old Post Road in Fairfield. To remove existing order from front walkway. And again, we have stack and ball hand for all streets. Actually, yes, we did. Sorry, wait. No, we just have stack and ball stack and ball hand. And this would just be what is, is going to be one, two, three. Yeah, just the list is. Let's see, you're going to be voting on this one. So we have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve I'll make the that. motion. Jim Beecher. <laughs> I'll second. All right. Rosina seconds. Oh, wait, wait. Rosina, you're recused. Oh, no, you're not. Sorry. Wrong no, answer. she's in. Rosina seconds. Okay. I'm confused. Okay, any discussion? Okay, no discussion. All in favor? Unanimous, so opposed. There's no opposition, <clears throat> and no abstentions. Pass unanimously. Last item on the agenda, um, and Jim Bohan will be voting on this one. Lake and Pete Souza, 121 Old Post Road in Fairfield, for property located at 121 Old Post Road in Fairfield for. A Belgian block edging on driveway and B extension of driveway. Do you care to make a motion? Adam, I'll make the motion to uh, deny item A with prejudice and to approve uh, item B. Okay. Second. Could you put up that that photograph again? Is that possible? Uh, sure. Give me a second. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah, we didn't have a second before. Jim, did you did you second that? Not yet. No. no I'm, we can't have discussion until we second. Yeah, it. you got to second it if we're going to okay. talk about it. I'll second for the purpose of discussion. Rosina seconds. Thank you. Okay. Discussion. This is a tough one. What are you having difficulty with? Unfortunately, it's a long-standing position of the commission that Belgian block edging is appropriate. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not, it shouldn't be a personal um, decision, like whether you think it looks good or not. It's just no, I know. the position of the commission. Yeah, right. And what I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, thank you, Anne. Good, good point, good point. Uh, I'm just torn by the, uh, the definition of what's Belgian block. You know, we have a but well. Yeah. What they have put in is very uniform. Um, let me pull it up. This, you know, it's a very say, uniform, this, very uniform stone. Right. You know? And it's a uniform granite. Well, those on on the, the stones on that pillar look a lot less than uniform. That's that's not it's, part of the application. Not, it's not. Yeah, I mean those are prima facie Belgian blocks. I don't I don't see what the you know you're, you're what the breaking question. up, Art. I'm sorry. I I just think those are prima facie Belgian blocks. I mean. I, I, I'm not sure what the uh, discrepancy would be. What about the blocks on on the pillar next to it? Those are field stones. It's not in the application. Okay. okay. And it's a it's Understood. field. This is a field stone. Right. Right. It's part of the stone wall. You know. You can see yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. Understand. Not in the same 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 material. I guess, you know, I could have made the same mistake or any number of people. I, I'm not sure that's relevant, though. I know. To a I certificate know, I of appropriateness. I hear you. I hear you. You know, should, should those blocks be put in soldier style? That's it. That's another issue. Nothing in the handbook about that. How do you put them in soldier style? Dig a deep, deep, dig deeper holes. They're still Belgian blocks. I know. I know. And kind of to me, the sad part is, as a commission, at least three of us were aware of this issue since December. So. The more that year. it kind of lagged, it's kind of more difficult for the property owners just because they were not made aware. Um, they were made aware once, but not right. repeatedly after to kind of um, say, by the way, you were told once, let's kind of do something about this. So, and I know it's like the whole pandemic came in and everything. So, um, was that, yeah. were, were they made aware by the commission? Okay. They were made aware by the commission. Yes. Okay. okay. Informally. So who, who, went to, um, who went to see them back in 2019 or whatever you said they was the first time they were. And me, I, I personally you, stopped in and introduced myself and made them aware of the issue that was brought to the commission's attention. I wasn't that was, in two, that was in 2019, Chris? Yep. Um, okay. Yeah, it's probably in the minutes um, in the violations or it, it, it should be in the minutes somewhere, but it was. 
So they have seen the violation this before. I actually no, I'm wrong about that. I don't think we ever issued it was a verbal. We we gave them notice. Um, yeah. And then I didn't think I was rude. I was trying to introduce myself and just unfortunately left the uh, situation. I. I Guys, I think yeah. the, that for for that issue, um, here's here's my thought on this. Uh, it that shouldn't um, that shouldn't apply to our decision whether or not this is appropriate or we approve or deny it. I I, I do think I, you know it's not likely, but the the, the applicant um, you know if if they if if they had to if they wanted to do something appeal or something. You know, it's possible uh, that they could have a claim for what's known in, in a legal doctrine. It's called latches, L-A-C-H-E-S. It's it, it basically says when a, a municipality sits on their hands and they don't enforce, uh, you know, a, a violation of some kind, um, that that could be a defense. And you know, if they decided to appeal us, that could be a possibility. I don't think it's likely because to to succeed on a latches claim, you have to you have to prove actual harm. So, you know, they, they could say, well, you know, gee, it's, it's, a, it's a bummer you waited or there was a time and it sounds like based on what Chris is saying, it, it doesn't sound like, you know, there was that much of a lag, but um, they still, they already paid for it. So, you know, I, I, I'm just saying uh, our discussion, you know, may or may not be relevant. It's up to the, the applicant, you know, to do that, but uh, um, uh Again, I, I don't, I don't think it impacted, you know, what they did after installing that. So um, that's that's up to them. But you know, I think you know we need to do an up or down vote. And if there's, uh, if if according to Jim, there's there's potential discrepancy in what's actually a Belgian block. That's a discussion for you know, you know, maybe the handbook or clarifying our our policies. That's all. Thank you. Thanks for clarifying that, Art. I agree with you. Okay, so should we take a vote on the motion on the table, which is to not deny A with, with prejudice and approve B as presented? All in favor? All opposed? None opposed, no abstentions. The motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> Thanks guys, that was, that was a tough one, but I, I thank you. It, like like we were okay. saying, it's unfortunate, yeah, but it is what it is. Yeah. All right, moving on, the, we need to approve minutes from uh, July. And uh, Art, Rosina, Jim, and Alyssa, we're here for that. So we're going to get a motion for the minutes. Before we answer Elisa's comment uh, question, I'll put the motion for the minute. Okay, Rosina. I'll second that. Court seconds. All in favor? All opposed. Not opposed. Motion passed unanimously. And uh, we're, or, uh, Alyssa, we'll get to. We're going to get to that further down on the agenda. Just Give me a second. The uh, repairs, uh, 669 Harbor Road, replace Kupla and Kine. That's the uh, Pequot Yacht Club. They decided, I guess, to rebuild that Kupla and Kine, which is good news. 297 Harbor Road, replace window sash and kind. 57 Spruce Street, replace roof and copper flashing and kind. 766 Old Post Road, replace chimney caps and kind. 524 Pequot Avenue replace fence along exit drive in kind, reset and replace where needed the front walkway in kind. We have no violations this month. And um, old business. Uh, the handbook, we had a special meeting which. Um, Yeah, I was just going to say we 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 had a special meeting um, on the handbook, uh, which I think was very productive. 
Um, and who was there? Rosina was there. Alyssa was there. Or not Alyssa. Um, I think it was just three yeah. of us, right? Yeah. yeah. Darren, Darren, Rosina, myself. Huh? Um, and it was very productive. We went through the whole book and we um, we we addressed about uh, a lot of things. I guess. I don't think I should go through right now because there's quite a, quite a bit of stuff, but, um, you know, we did talk about Belgian block was 1 of the issues that was discussed and, um, and the painting of the brick and I think, you know, and, and uh, fences and fence gates and there's a number of things. Let's see if I have it here. Um, well, the big 1 was the, sh the shrubbery at them. Yes, the shrubbery, yeah. Jim, you were there too, weren't you? Yes. Sorry, I forget who was there. And also we talked about pre-jet pre-application meetings and um that sort of thing. Um yeah, shrubs, I guess there's a there's a, a conflict of um in the handbook stating that we, we have no jurisdiction over plantings and then we, you know, we actually say that there are, we stipulate that planting screen, um, you know, pool fencing and generators and um, air conditioning units and stuff like that. Um, yes, the meet, meeting minutes should be, I don't, know, I don't think I have them yet, but um, we should have meeting minutes on that special meeting to review. So I'll be, I'll be distributing those when I get them. Um, so anyway, it was pretty productive. I have, I have to talk to the town attorney to, um, talk to him about a few of these issues and find out where we actually stand and where we actually have jurisdiction and where we don't. Because we very, you know, we could be like overstepping our, you know, what we're allowed to do. Um, at any rate, moving on the. New business, uh, the town has updated us on the uh, in person meetings and they're, they're saying that we can have in person meetings again. So, um, so next month, I think. We, we might have an, an in person meeting. I'll let you know, but it's, it's uh, looking pretty. Pretty good. I do have the room reserved for the year. So, just in case. We went back to in person meetings, so, um. I'll keep you posted on that. Um, they still want to keep the um, virtual meetings alive um, because they find it useful. I think yes. the format, you know, like the the way that we are processing applications will stay the same. So we'll just submit two applications, our copies, and then we'll do one online um, so that the application is available online. And then there'll be one that I guess we'll have at the library. I think is probably the best place. Because that's you know, people, nobody ever went to the uh, no, the, the live meetings for the public. What's that? It'll be a public meeting. Yeah. Can I bring um, up the thing I've I, 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 I've been thinking about, Adam? That the business of the shrubbery issue. You know, does the can the shrubbery be used as, as a a visual shield for things like swimming pools, so forth. I know, I guess we left it there, right? I know we left it. You were going to talk with the town attorney about that. And I, and I, I understand that, about that conflict, that one place in the handbook that says you have to assume the shrubbery is not there, and the other place you could say you can use shrubbery. Do we want to, as a commission, the conversation of what's our sense? What's what's our sense of what the handbook should say? Uh, quite apart from the legal thing, I think that'd be a valuable thing because lawyers have their value, they're necessary, but I think also there's there's a historic and criteria also. It would be worthwhile. I I suggest that the commission have a try and develop a sense of of the commission. Should landscaping 
be considered as a shield or should it not? There are historical issues there. Well, we I'm have, not we sure have been, sti been stipulating screening to hide certain yeah. items. Now, the question is, do we actually have the jurisdiction to do that? Can we stipulate? I mean, I think, I, I mean, I guess we can because people are agreeing, have agreed to it and are, and we can enforce it. Um, but I mean, it's, that's why we're, it, because there's a conflict between that language or, or, or those actions that we've that, that we've had that we've made, you know those um, motions that we've made to stipulate plantings to screen things, and the fact that our handbook says, you know that we can't, or even the, the, the I think the Connecticut state statutes say that we can't, you know, uh, consider foliage as 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 being there, you know, when we evaluate a structure or whatever an application. Are you saying that in are you saying that our past decisions, our individual localized decisions to accept screening has already created a de facto sense of the of the committee? That's fine. You know, maybe they, I don't know. the legal issue is in a whole other arena. I understand that. Well, the legal issue is important because if, if we. Yeah, right. if, yeah. If if it's not in our jurisdiction, then we can't enforce it. You know, so yeah. it's sort of yeah. pointless for us to be doing it in the first place. Um, I'm sure, Art may have a, an opinion on this, being a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't thought about it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to talk to the town attorney and, and see what he says. And, uh, I mean, we we may also have the right to be able to do these these things, and and um, on a limited basis, you know, I don't I don't know how far we can can go, but it's we'll, we'll get to the bottom of it eventually. I haven't had a chance to reach out to them yet, and and I haven't done anything with the handbook since our meeting, but um, slowly but surely, I think it will it will resolve itself. Okay, thank you. All right, any other uh, new business or comments from the commission? Alisa had a question about the, um, is there a policy any, is there any policy that new homeowners get a copy of the handbook if they live in the historic district? No, there's, I mean, I would like to be able to get um, new homeowners um, the handbook and occasionally I'll have a realtor reach out to me and say, I have a, you know, someone looking at a home, and of course, immediately I'll send them a handbook, you know, to pass on to this new homeowner or potential homeowner. But, but it's, 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 um, it's nearly impossible for me to know who's, uh, you know, buying a new home in the historic district, you know. Um, so I think it's it has on to the be up to the realtors. It's on the town well, website. The, will it make any sense to have, I don't, I'm guessing in years past, maybe. The commission did something similar, but to introduce the historic districts to the handbook. I know a lot of people know it, um, but maybe doing some sort of meeting at the Fairfield Museum and kind of doing a brief explanation of these are the three historic districts in town. These are the things that um, now that we are um, revamping the handbook, it might be a good opportunity to make everyone that's in the districts aware, invite the realtors to that, so make the realtors aware so that there's nothing falling through um, from now on well, forward. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, that sounds like a great idea. That's I know Mary Doon like had mentioned that well, Mary Doon had mentioned that there were grants or there was something that yeah. um, they could do to help with. So. Or something like that. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think we want to count on the realtors to do that because um, some houses aren't even sold by realtors. I think it needs to come from True. official at the town, like when the, the deed 
on the land records gets transferred, be the, the town clerk notes that it's in the historic or in a historic district yep. and they're responsible to send out a handbook or a notice that says, hey, by the way, you you know, you purchased a home in the historic district and here's a here's our Fair, Fairfield Town website and yeah. here's where you can find out all the information on that. And I agree with you. I feel like the town needs to take a little bit of responsibility here because to put it all on us is crazy. I mean, we're, you know, volunteers trying to help out the, you know, Town with the historic district commission, and you know, and and I think the least they could do is something like you're suggesting, so that it doesn't become an issue because it is an issue. You know, it is. Yeah. And Alyssa is suggesting, you know, sending out. I mean, we could also put together a mailing list of all the homes in the historic districts. I mean, we have addresses for all of them. Um, and it doesn't have to be addressed to the uh, specific homeowner. It could be, you know, addressed to the current resident of that home. Um, and maybe, you know, whenever we, we print the book, the handbook, it just goes out, just mass mail of the handbooks. Well, you can just send everyone a link to it. Um, I know, but I think it, it's, harder, it's harder to find a emails. I mean, it's easier to get to, to, to find the physical addresses because we have them, but emails. It could be a postcard. Yeah. It could be a postcard introduced in the historic district and have the link where they can find it. That's like yeah. maybe the cheapest yeah. way to so, do it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it might be a little bit more expensive to print all those copies. Yeah. But like you said, we could get a grant to do it. Adam, any idea how many Homes are in the all the historic districts. I don't. They're in the it's in the handbook. I a, yeah. 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 I, don't, I mean, yeah. I don't know if it's if it's tallied up in the handbook, but it's um right there. I'll count them. Count them pretty easily. They're all in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there yeah. they are. I don't know. I, I mean, there's probably not as many as you think. Yeah, that's probably less than a hundred, or around a hundred. Um. Yeah, maybe just a letter to the to. Right now, it's very difficult to find the handbook on the on the on the uh, town website. It's sort of hit. I don't know if anyone, you, you guys go in there to to look at the, you know, the application materials every month, and you have to go to files, and you have to do the pull down menu, and you have to search for it. I try to, you know, direct people there, and they have trouble finding it. Um, it's four to five hundred. Four to five hundred. Yeah. Let's just say she just Googled it and said there's an estimated 75 buildings in the historic district. It's more than that. But that may just be downtown. Yeah, it seems light, 75. You know, so maybe it is what it is, but I think, yeah, um, a letter with a link to the handbook might be the best way to do it. But I think we need to figure out, and I, it's, I guess that's my job, is to figure out how to, to get the, um, the handbook in an easy location on a website, so it's not so difficult to find. Yeah, I think there could be just a tab under historic districts right on the main page of the website that says handbook. Click here. The, I think the webmaster could set that up pretty easily for you, Adam. Yeah, yeah, you think so? I, I thought, um, Yeah, see, see, on the in the web, uh, the historic district page, it says on the bottom, it says historic districts and properties handbook. And you click on it, it says, oops, missing page. <laughs> so. Yeah. You know, the other thing is, is I'm just a little concerned that we'd be creating the obligation, the duty to inform people and 
then they're going to come back like uh, these folks did and say nobody said something to us. One idea would be, I don't know how you do it, but maybe we could explore it is, um, you know, when somebody's buying, a, 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 a generally speaking, uh, unless like Chris said, it's a, some kind of private deal or inheritance, they're going to do a title search. That would be that would be the most you know reliable way of of uh, someone because we're getting a mortgage the you know as you guys know you probably bought houses the the lawyer orders a title search and that shows up any easements and any notations zoning notations so the most reliable way would be for some notation on uh, I don't know that in the on the tax assessor's card or the town clerk's office there'd be like a, mm -hmm. a, a an asterisk or a check so um it shows up on the title search and you know the attorney or the title searcher reports that this is in the historic district and presumably they would uh you know uh, be aware of that but uh i i mean i i don't know how that the, but I, I think that's something maybe uh you know for for certain deceit's sake i i think uh, maybe if there was something on the town assessor's card, that would be the best way versus us, you know, doing, you know, community outreach. Well, you know, I don't think the issue is that people don't know they're buying in the historic district. I just don't think they realize what it entails. What's right, involved. You know, yeah, what's involved. They, they typically know that they're going, they're buying in an historic district. So I don't think that's the issue. It's just that, the, and I think the realtor might just, you know, just graze over. Oh yeah, you're in a historic district, and not tell them what that entails. You know. Um, all right. No, I, I I think yeah, that's that's probably I, I agree with you all on that. So yeah, I mean part then part of it is is uh, you know educating and encouraging the realtors to you know yeah. point that out or or maybe we you know maybe we could come up with some sort of flyer uh, that we uh, we distribute to you know the the Fairfield you know board of realtors. And say this is you know we, we we highly recommend that you do that. They'll take notice of that for sure. You know how realtors are. Yeah, see Brown also. Sometimes they Brown don't want to blow a deal. So yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Betsy Brown is an award-winning town clerk. I mean, she's up named the best. Yeah, he's the great. Town clerks of Connecticut named her the best one around. She's wonderful. I. She might be valuable in this conversation. Who's that? You said the town clerk? Betsy Brown. Betsy Brown. Yeah, she's she's yeah. a superstar. She's a she, she, yeah. She's a super gal. Yeah. Totally. True. I can ask her um, what we could do to address this. Yeah. Maybe she'll have a good idea. Yep. Okay. We're lucky to have her. All good stuff. Okay. Great. Well, does anyone else have anything to add to this? Uh, Just um, one one quick comment. I know there are some other open notices of. Um, sorry, I'm uh, some notices violation. of violation. I just wondered what the status of those are, so we don't. Which ones? Well, I I think I think there may have been some violation notices that haven't uh, been acted upon. Just wondering, maybe we could get a status report of those. I think I think we're up to date. That there's only one that hasn't um, been acted upon. That's the one on um, Burnett Burnett Field. Attorney, Burnett, Burnett. an old post. No, on the corner of Hillside and Verna, up okay. here in Greenfield Hill, or the columns, yeah, the synthetic columns. What, what about what about turning on post hole, um, post road, old post road, the um, fence that was. Um, Didn't they come last month? Oh, I I don't know. I missed. Um, I might have missed. Yeah. What? Well, yeah, they came. I believe they came. Um, yeah. That was the Sherman Parsonage. But that was not the no no not not the, the Sherman Parsonage came because the other yeah. the other one where they replaced the fence. There was another the, one that a guy presented um, that it's a fence in between um, shrubs. Not that one. There's one house at the corner of Turney and Old Post right next to um, 
121. Was that a violation? It was. It was. It was in the email that they sent um, with all the violations on all post roads. It basically went from a low wood fence to a tall vinyl fence. Well, one of them was uh, uh, Tetro's property. Is that the one you're referring to? That one. Yes. Yeah. He, he's 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 replacing it with wood fence. Okay. Yeah. And there I, think was something was else. I, think it, I think it was a wood fence, and he replaced it with a vinyl fence, and he's replacing it back with a wood fence. Okay. At least that's what he told um, there me. Was I mean, also I can't imagine. On, on the comments that Henry had sent back then in the days, like back to 2019, there was one about the fan in the kitchen of the Burr Mansion, that it's very visible, and if that was going to be um, screened in some sort of way, but that also goes back to Jim's comment of can we screen, screen uh, request screening or not? So well, we did. Yeah, I mean, we already requested that they screen it, you know, in perpetuity with evergreen screening. So whether which that one has not done anything. So yeah. All right, well, if there, if there are items out there, you know, just send me an email with a list of them. I, you know, I sort of took on the ones that like that uh, were brought in front of me and tried try to deal with them as best as I could. I mean, I think one of them was for a previous owner, 323 Old Post Road, so we can't pursue that one. 111 Post Road, they're replacing it with wood. 121 was just There was one about the... The pool equipment. Uh, I think that was the corner of Beach and Old Post Road. Yeah. But you can see the equipment every single time you walk yeah, by. Yeah, it's uh, because... 205 Beach. There's screening so. of 18. Yeah, I did. I did talk to them. Um, yeah, so I think they have not come in front of us on the two hundred five okay. Beach Road. No, oh, no, wait. That's two hundred five. Oh, I'll have to go through it. I thought they all came. But maybe that one hasn't. It's hard to keep track of all these violations. So. So I'll, I'll look at that and see what's where we are that. And if you have any other ones, send them to me. Okay. All right. I'll make the motion to. Okay. To adjourn. Yes. <laughs> we have a second. I'll be happy to second that. Okay. At least a second. Ten seconds. Well, let's just try to, but she doesn't have a voice because she's typing. <laughs> okay. All in favor? All right. All opposed. All opposed. We're adjourned. Thank you. Guys. Thank you all. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.